We have a new release of Strimsy. Uh, it's version 0, 0.27.0. Uh, so let's uh, have a look what's new in it. And let's start with what's probably the main feature and that's support for the uh, ARM64 uh, CPUs and architecture, which uh, was added to the Kafka bridge now and to the Strimsy operators and uh, Kafka containers and Zookeeper containers and Kafka Connect and so on. So uh, you should now be able to go and uh, use it. Uh, there are still some parts of Strimsy which do not support ARM64 platform. Uh, that's, for example, the drain cleaner utility, the, the canary tool, or the test containers and the client examples. But for the main thing, running Kafka using operators, that should now be all supported. Now, uh, we call the support uh, experimental so far. Uh, we are not aware of any issues or any problems, but uh, just to be clear, it currently doesn't have the same test coverage as uh, the x86 platform has. So uh, yeah, that's why we are a bit careful, but uh, yeah, there are no known issues and we will of course aim to improve the test coverage for ARM in the next releases as well. The ARM64 support is based on uh, multi-arch container images. So you do not need to do anything special to install it on, uh, on ARM. It should be exactly the same as you would do it on, uh, on x86. So uh, yeah, you can just give it a try and uh, let us know. And uh, because this was something what a lot of users were asking for, maybe we can do a quick demo of this feature. I have my Kubernetes cluster already prepared here. Uh, it's running in AWS. It's using the uh, M6G uh, node. As you can see, the server version, it's running on the Linux ARM64 platform. You can also do kubectl get node or white. And you can see that the kernel version is uh, for ARCH64 as well. And uh, currently I don't have any pods running in this namespace, but to install Strimsy, the process is exactly the same as on uh, the x86 platform. So you just update the namespaces in the installation files and then you do kubectl apply and it creates all the files, it creates the deployment uh, and you can see that the operator is uh, already running and to create Kafka, we just have exactly the same Kafka resource as uh, we have normally. So again, let's do kubectl apply Kafka. And we should see how the zookeeper pods are starting. Uh, it's using persistent storage, so it will take a minute to create the storage and start the pods. But uh, yeah, as you can see, there is nothing special about running it on ARM. It just works. Another new feature is uh, that some feature gates are in this release moving uh, to the beta stage. What does that mean is uh, that uh, uh, in the previous versions, these feature gates were disabled by default and you had to intentionally enable them to use them. But from Streams 027, they will be enabled by default. And if you would want to disable them, you will have to explicitly disable them using and environment variable configuration in the cluster operator. The first feature gate which moves to beta is the control plane listener feature gate, which uh, uh, ensures that the Kafka brokers will now use two separate listeners for the internal communication. One will be used for uh, the data replication uh, and another one will be used for the control communication and using separate listeners for these should bring better stability of the cluster because the control data will not uh, mixed with the replication data and they will not be queued behind them uh, and so on. So uh, 
this will now be enabled by default. What's important to keep in mind is that when upgrading uh, from Streamz 022 or earlier, or when downgrading to Streamz 022 or earlier, you have to disable this feature gate in Streamz 027 because these earlier versions of Streamz they do not support the control plane listener, and you will not be able to upgrade or downgrade. Uh, while the cluster being fully available to the Kafka clients. Another feature gate which moves to beta and is now enabled by default is the service account patching feature gate. And uh, because it's now enabled by default, uh, it means that uh, all the service accounts created by the cluster operator will be now uh, checked during every reconciliation if they need any updates. And uh, if they do, they will be updated. This is important because if you want to set any labels or annotations on them, you should uh, use the template section of the various Streamzy custom resources and uh, not do it directly on the service account anymore. And uh, let's have a quick look uh, at the demo of the control plane listener. I am still on my ARM cluster in uh, Amazon AWS and as you can see the Kafka cluster is now ready and what we can do is we can check that it's really using the separate control plane listener and to do that let's uh, do cube cuddle locks my cluster Kafka zero so we will check the locks from one of the Kafka pods and let's grab it for uh, the term acceptor and you can see a bunch of messages. What's important is here you can see that it's starting the, the control plane acceptor on the control plane 9090 listener, whereas the other acceptors for the other listeners are just the data plane acceptor. So there's the replication 9091 for the replication, and then there are the plane and TLS ones which are user configured. So uh, we can really see that it's using the separate listener for the control plane communication because now in 027 the feature gate is enabled by default. Another thing which is probably worth talking about, although it's not really a new feature, is Log4j2. We already did a new stream release 0261 which uh, was uh, patched against the most critical of the log4j2 CVEs against the CV44228. But now in Stream 027, we use the newer log4j2 library uh, 2.17.0, which uh, should be safe from all the three known CVEs. So uh, you should feel safe to use it. There are also some other uh, less major improvements. There is now support for Scrum SHA. 256 authentication in Kafka Connect, in Mirror Maker, and in Bridge. In the Helm chart, you can now configure the environment variables of the cluster operator, which is something uh, users have been asking about. And we also updated uh, various dependencies such as cruise control, the open policy agent authorizer, uh, the Canico builder used uh, to build new Kafka Connect images, uh, and so on. And there are, of course, also many other uh, bug fixes and uh, minor improvements. So that's it for, for this release. Thanks to everyone who contributed, and uh, I hope you upgrade soon. <laughs>